Hello, Virgos. So someone here has Norse spirit guides. That's coming through very strongly. I feel some, some, I mean, I have, I'm pagan, so I have Norse spirit guides as well, but I feel like, you know, for this particular energy group, there's um, some Norse spirit guides here that want to come through. Um, let's see what the story is. So this is for Virgos. Could be love, could be money, could be psychic awakening. It's just whatever the cards want to say. It could be a past person, a new person. It's just whatever, whatever's going on here. We've got the hanged man, the king of pentacles. Got the nine of swords. Okay, that's interesting. Hanged man, king of pentacles. Just bear with my phone. Sorry, it just takes a minute to adjust to the, the pictures. So it'll kind of be in and out for just a minute. But it should stabilize shortly. So, okay, you have a new start here. You do have a new start. We've got the hanged man. We've got the king of pentacles. And we have the nine of swords. So there's a new start, but there's some anxieties and doubts with this new start. So we see the nine of swords here. There might be a final battle so this, hmm, so I see two different stories here. If you're a man, I feel like this is, or if you're in that masculine energy, I feel like this is two different ways of being. Like you have like your heart against your mind, like two different ways of being that are kind of at war with each other because I see some kind of like friction here. Um, for others, this is two different love interests. You have a King of Pentacles here and a King of Swords. So what I'm feeling is... I'm feeling like you're going to have a new start with this King of Pentacles. Take it out, it resonates. For some of you, it's the King of Swords you're having a new start with. And the King of Pentacles is who you're leaving behind. But I basically get the energy that you're leaving someone or something behind and you're you're going towards someone new. Now, you might already know who this person is. The hanged man here, it's all about letting go. It's all about pausing, reflecting, resting, kind of going inward during this Mercury retrograde energy. I feel like you're going to be in like a really meditative kind of state. You're going to really... Um, I feel like you're going to have some epiphanies during this retrograde. Like, I think it's going to be mostly good for you. I mean, retrogrades are always, like, Mercury retrograde is always kind of a struggle. Like, it's always kind of stressful. You know, it's good not to make any major investments. Like, don't sign anything without reading the fine print. Don't make any major life decisions. It's best not to travel if you don't have to. But, you know, I actually see some really good energy here for you during Mercury retrograde. I see, I see this as a positive context. I mean, I see this in a positive context because I feel like you're letting go of something. I feel like, I feel like it, it just feels like freeing to me. It feels like this kind of, um, this free spirited, open, adventurous energy. Like you're reclaiming this side of yourself, like you're having fun again. So I feel like you've had epiphanies lately and you're going to, those epiphanies are going to get stronger and there's going to be a lot of psychic energy coming up for you during this retrograde where you're really going to be going inward. I think a lot of you are going to be doing some shadow work. I feel like you're going to be, I just hear like reconnecting with your inner child, like reconnecting. Like I feel like you have like this adventurous, fun, loving side. And it's not to say that you don't have that anymore, but I feel like you've kind of left that part of yourself behind or you've, you haven't lost that part of yourself, but it's like you've disconnected from that part of yourself. And so I feel like you have like this blessing in disguise kind of energy where you're going to go through some things this retrograde that are going to bring you back in touch with that side of yourself. Like I, I just get the energy that like your spirit guides are going to throw some stuff at you and you're going to get upset in the moment, but it's actually for your best interest. Like it's something like they're like, I see your spirit guides are like planning behind the scenes. Like I get the sense that your, your spirit guides are kind of working, working together to bring about these major changes in your life and bring you back to the person you used to be or the person you want to be basically bringing back, bringing yourself back to, um, your, your free spirited, fun, adventurous side, just, you know, living in the moment. It's like, um, almost like a soul retrieval kind of energy where they're like, they're, they're bringing these soul pieces back to you. I hope that makes sense. Some of you might want to look into doing soul retrieval or chakra healing as well along with your shadow work during this retrograde. 
but I just feel like I just get the sense of like planning. Like I feel like your spirit guides are planning something and you're not aware of it. Like they're not letting you be conscious of it. I think some of you are trying to look into this. Like you're trying to pull cards yourself or you're trying to use your pendulum and your pendulum's going all over the place or you're like getting mixed energies. And I feel like I feel like your spirit guides just don't want to let you know because they don't want you to control things and they don't want you to sabotage things. And um, I just see like, I just keep hearing like it's like part of the bigger picture. Like you're not going to understand what's going on in the moment. But like if you, you know, six months from now, you're going to look back on this energy and you're going to understand why things had to happen the way that they did. That doesn't mean that I'm predicting anything super horrible for you during this retrograde or anything like that. I mean, it may be. I don't know. I'm not I'm not predicting anything like that. I'm just saying that there's going to be some little surprises here and there. And like in the moment, you're going to be kind of like holding on to those control issues and you're going to want to um, figure things out and you're going to want to look into things. And your spirit guides are almost going to keep you blocked from it. I, I hate to say it because I know I've been in that situation too. And it pisses me off when they do that. But I almost feel like they're not that they're not going to let you know anything, but there's certain things that they're not going to let you know now. Like if there's certain things that they, they want it to play out, they want this to play out naturally. Now, this could be like a new love where they don't want you to repeat mistakes from the past. They want you to do this differently. So basically, they don't want you to sabotage it. They don't want you to control it. They don't want you to put a timeline on it and try to predict, you know, have it all planned out. They want you to just kind of go with the flow. They want you in this very free spirited energy where things just happen naturally. And this is part of your destined path. This is part of getting on your on your creative and your spiritual path, getting you on your psychic path. I feel like all of this, it's all just coming in. It's all just blending together. Like you're just going to look back and you're going to understand. You're going to put all the pieces together. But I feel like there's going to be some confusion over the next couple of weeks, to be honest, where you're, it's like you're kind of back and forth. Like you're not sure you're not sure which direction you're going. But I just feel like I feel like there's a reason for it. So it's not something to I hope that makes sense. It's like it's not something to be afraid of. It's like you're going to there's like lots of blessing in disguise kind of energy. So you're going to look back on it and you're going to understand. You're going to see how everything lined up. You know what I mean? Like sometimes chaotic things happen. Like sometimes you you lose a job or an old relationship. And in the moment, you're just pissed off and you're upset and you're confused. But then you look back later and you're like, okay, I was being spared from that. And, you know, everything, you know, you're going to see the sequence of events. You're like all that had to happen the way it did so I would be at this place at this time and I met my soulmate there and now I'm happy. It's like that kind of energy where it's like like just blessing in the skies energy where it's like you're not going to understand it in the moment, but you're going to look back later and just everything. I just get like lots of synchronicities, like everything just kind of, you know, um, blending together. It's like almost like a really colorful energy. It's really beautiful, but... But you basically have these spirit guides that want you to let go of control issues. They want you to, um, they want you to live your best life, but they want you to let go of control. They want you to let things happen naturally, which might be why they're not letting you know all the details about certain things, which I know, I know is frustrating. I get it. I've been there. It's upsetting. It's annoying. I feel it. But I just feel like maybe like when you, maybe you're the type, like when you, no too many details you start like obsessing over you start overthinking it like let's say that they're planning on you meeting your true love in a week from now they don't want to tell you all the details because then it's going to be harder for them to do their work because you're going to be like oh am I going to meet him or her at this coffee shop am I going to meet them um at this restaurant I'm going to should I go out where what should I do and you're going to be so neurotic and so on edge that you might sabotage it for yourself or when you do meet your person, it's not going to flow naturally because you're going to be like staring at them with googly eyes and be like, oh, is this is this it? Is this them? You know what I mean? Like you're going to be you're just going to you're going to hold on to control too tightly. And so that's why they're not letting you know certain things because they want to take care of it for you. They want they want you to just release control and surrender and let them take care of this for you and let these things happen on their own, happen naturally. And um, like I said, you're going to look back and it's all going to make sense. You know, it's not going to make sense in the next couple of weeks, but it's going to make sense after that, um, I feel. So I hope I hope that resonates. I hope that makes sense to you guys. But um, but yeah, this 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 couple of weeks are all about shadow work, all about going inward, all about um, basically releasing control. That's a major that's a major energy that your spirit. There's certain spirit guides. I feel like male spirit guides too, like Norse spirit guides as well that want you to work on 
releasing control and just surrender and getting back in touch with your free spirited self. So I feel like they're almost challenging you to let go of control. They're almost taking your control away and leaving you in the dark a little bit because they want to challenge you to release that control. I know it's frustrating. Don't shoot the messenger. That's just what I'm feeling. I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this to you. Okay. Take it up with your spirit guide. That's between you and them. It's just when I'm channeling, I just, I just, you know, I'm just the middleman here. Okay. <laughs> um, but that's what I'm hearing that there's some male spirit guides, some Norse spirit guides, particularly that, that are, they're, they're leaving you in the dark because they want to challenge you to, they're taking that control away from you and not giving you the answers that you're seeking right now because they want to, almost like they want to frustrate you, but they, when they want to push you to that edge to where you have to surrender and you have to just let them take care of it and you have to just trust the process. And like I said, all of this energy is like, it's all, I see like almost like these colors, like I get like, like the Pocahontas song or whatever, like colors of the wind. I don't know why I'm seeing that, but it's like, maybe that's, maybe that's relevant for someone here, but I'm just seeing like these colors merging where it's like, they're all, I don't know how to explain that energy. It's, it's a weird visual I'm getting. Um, I'm almost seeing like pastel colors too that are like all just merging with each other, but it's like, you're going to look back and it's going to make sense. It's, um, just every, there's lots of synchronicity. Everything's just lining up for you. And like I said, this is also getting you on your spiritual path. So this isn't just going to help you with love. I mean, there is a new start with love here, but there's also something about a spiritual path here where I feel like this is also to get you back in touch with your creative side. Like some of you need to start painting again, need to start singing again, need to start writing again, need to start dancing again, need to pursue those hobbies that you've been putting off, um, need to go out and live your life and have fun again. They want that balance. They want you to get back in touch with that energy. And I feel like, I feel like letting go is also part of that. It's like when you let go, you're going to be back in touch with that creative, free spirited side of yourself. So it's like, you're going to have love, you're going to have money because you're going to be in that energy of um, that, that high vibrational kind of free spirited energy where the world is your oyster and you can manifest the life that you want, which includes love. But it, I also see some major energy shifts this year with your spiritual path, like with your career path as well, as a result of you surrendering and letting them take care of things. Because I feel like there's like spiritual blessings and things that they're trying to bring you. But if they give you too much info, you're going to try to like like you're going to overthink it. So they're just kind of like, they're kind of, they're, they're just kind of taking control basically. Um, but I do feel like, okay. So anyway, I feel like there's like a, there's like a love thing here as well, where I feel like, well, okay, let me tell, let me tell one story and then I'm going to get into the love, the love reading here. So for, this is just for a few men in here. I feel like you're like, your like your calm, peaceful side, like your heart, your good, that, that side of yourself is like almost at war with your mind where it's like, you get it, you get in this anxiety energy and it's like, you want this new start. But then the key to this new start is to merge these energies because I feel like there's some men that are watching this that are, that are, um, two back and forth. Like they lack, like you need to merge these different, this King of Swords and this King of Pentacles energy. And this could be for, for women as well, but there's just like an imbalance. I feel like a, like heart versus like heart, soul, ego. It's like all those things need to come into play. It's like, you can't have, you can't have one without the other. You know what I mean? Like you can't get rid of your ego. Your ego needs to be there. It's there to protect you, but you can't be all ego either. You need to have some heart and soul as well. Like you need to balance all these different energies. And I feel like this is somebody that goes back and forth between like, you know, being, being too generous with their finances and giving more than they're receiving in relationships with love, with whatever else. It's like, they're always getting the short end of the stick. They're always, um, they're always giving, they're always the chaser. They're always pursuing people. They're always, they're the person that parties that, you know, drunks babysit everyone, but they don't get to be, be drunk and have fun themselves. They have to be like the logical, stable one, and they don't get to let loose and have fun. You know what I mean? And then I feel like that energy, it's like it almost like causes you like a bitterness where you end up in this King of Swords energy. And this could be male or female, but like you end up in this King of Swords energy where you're just like, okay, I'm tired of people, like screw everybody. Like you just kind of distance yourself and you just kind of get in your head and you feel alone and you start detaching from people. And it's kind of saying like, you know, it's like eight of swords energy too, but like also nine of swords, which is like anxieties, like 
worries, you know, control, like, you know, um, negative thoughts for creating this negative reality where it's like you need to learn to to balance these two energies. Otherwise, you're going to continue. It's like you're, some of you are in this karmic cycle where of like bitterness, where it's like you give too much. Some of you have like a some of you were like witches in, the, in your past life and like you um, were like burned at the stake or something or you were like sacrifice. I get like sacrifice energy like you sacrificed yourself like could be like in a war or something in your past lives where you really sacrificed yourself for the good of others. And I feel like you're repeating that soul contract this lifetime. So you might need to look into that more because I just get the sense that you're like an empath. You're a giver. You keep giving and giving and giving even after you don't have anything to give. You know, even after you have nothing left to give, it's like you're draining yourself and you have to stop doing that. Otherwise, it's going to continue to lead you to this energy where you feel bitter. You feel alone. You feel closed off. You feel like you're getting the short end of the stick all the time. You know what I mean? Like in the moment, you're like, oh, I'm I'm. I'm the daddy or I'm the mommy and I'm taking care of everybody and it feels good and you feel appreciated. But then, you know, you end up in this energy where you're kind of resentful. You're like, why am I always this person? Why am I always in this role? And for a lot of you, it does have to do with past lives. It does have to do with like a martyr complex where um, you had to sacrifice, like you sacrificed yourself in past lives. Um, or you like... I'm trying to see see here. Like you just you just gave and gave and gave. Like you gave too much, and and you're you're repeating that this lifetime. And so I feel like you need to have more of a balance. You need to learn to say no to people. You need to learn to um, protect your energy more, and maybe give to the right people. Like maybe like have a few select people that you give to. But like you can't just give and give and give to everybody. You can't. There's so many, as an empath, you know, there's so many psychic vampires in the world that will just take advantage of your heart and your generosity and your desire to give. Now, this could be you financially giving to people. This could be emotionally, mentally, spiritually, constantly helping people. And it, it's not saying that you shouldn't help people, but it's saying that you should also put yourself first sometimes and that you should also make sure you don't have psychic vampires around you that are just draining you and just using you and just you know, constantly, constantly, constantly just, you know, taking like, you might have like dark cords. I see for some of you have like these black cords that you need to cut from these people from your past, like these very weak minded psychic vampire types that they're draining your energy. So some of you get sad and depressed out of nowhere and you don't even know why you're feeling sad or depressed or exhausted. And it's because you have these psychic vampires from your past that have these black gooey kind of cords in you like entangled on you. Um, and like they just pull from your energy psychically whenever they need an en energy boost and you don't even realize that they're doing it. You're not even conscious of this, but it's like you never cut the cord. You never got closure with those people. You never set the boundaries with those people. So you're still an energy source from for certain psychic vampires. They're still pulling on you here and there. And that's nothing to be afraid of, but it's just something to be conscious of. I know some readers will be like, oh, like, oh, positive vibes only and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Like, you need to know these things so that you can address them accordingly. You can't just positive vibes your way through through life. It doesn't work like that. You have to be aware of these things. Don't give in to them. Don't, don't feed them with fear, but be, you know, logical. Be grounded. Be aware of these things so that you can change them, so that you can end them. You know, meditate, think on this. Who are these psychic vampires? Who do you feel like m might be draining your energy? And and go inward and cut those cords and shield yourself. Cleanse yourself. Do an uncrossing candle. That would be really good for you. Do an uncrossing spell to um, remove negative energies and then do some protection work and really, um, you know, block these energies out. And also on a conscious physical level at the same time, learn to say no, learn to set boundaries you know, learn not to give and give and give. Some of you have past life soul contracts that you need to end so that you don't just spend your life giving away everything. You know what I mean? Like you need, your spirit guides are trying to refill your energy source. It's almost like I see this like bright light in you and it's like been drained. It's like, it's like almost like there's some darkness there. Not saying that you're dark, but just that you've given too much of yourself away and some of you need to do soul retrieval now. Some of you need to call back those soul pieces that you've given to other people, other situations, traumatic events. You need to call those parts of yourself back to you and you need to keep those parts of yourself in you. Those are, those are for you. Those are yours, you know? And, um, you know, that's just important to find those boundaries. It really is. And, and I, like I said, I'm fine. There's a balance here. It's not saying to stop helping people. It's not saying to stop giving. 
It's saying don't give to psychic vampires. Give to other empaths. Give to genuine people. And don't give more than you can give. Don't give more. Don't, when it's exhausting you, don't keep giving. You know what I mean? You need to recharge. This is someone that's like complete, like just giving every single day, all the time. And it's like, I'm seeing that you're not, you, you don't have enough time. Because they just see someone like with his light in them. And it's like they're giving the light every, like every day. They're just giving it away, giving it away, giving, giving away like their soul essence almost. It's like they're giving away what makes them them. And like your spirit guides and your higher self doesn't doesn't even have a time to recharge you. Like you're not really doing much to rest and heal and have fun and go on adventures or travel or live your best life. You're not really doing you're not you don't have enough time or energy to like do the things that you need to do to recharge yourself and get that energy and get that light back. You're just you're giving more than you have to give. You know, there's not there's there's just an imbalance here is what I'm feeling. Um so be mindful of that, please. Like, you know, like I said, you can still be kind. You can still be giving, but you need to find a good balance. So that's for some of you where it's like some of you are, you know, you need to end those old soul contracts. You need to learn to set boundaries. You need to learn so you don't keep going through this cycle. You know what I mean? You need to learn to set those boundaries. Otherwise, you're just going to end up bitter again. You're going to end up resentful again. So you have to find that good balance. Um, for others, I feel like, so let me get into love reading really quick before my phone cuts out. <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure out my camera phone. I got a new phone and it likes to cut the videos out short. So anyway, some of you, so like I said in the beginning of the video, you're being challenged to let go. You're being challenged to get back in touch with that free spirited adventurous side of yourself. And I think that's another reason why it's like when you connect to like a higher energy source, that energy can flow through you. So it's easier for you to give because you're almost doing it from like a, just from like a different state, like your higher self is doing it, but it's like you're giving right now you're giving from like a, from your own energy source. Does that make sense? It's like you're giving and giving and giving, but you're taking that the energy you're giving is from your own energy source. It's not from your spirit guides or from anything else. You're just giving your soul essence away. Basically, you're giving parts of yourself away. But if you connect to the source, you, you can, you're able to channel those higher vibrational energies and give those away and let those channel and flow through you. I hope that makes sense. So just find a balance. It doesn't, you know, don't close your heart. Don't stop helping people. Just, you know, cut, be mindful of the psychic vampires. You know, you can, you can be an empath and still tell someone to, and at the same, you can be an empath and you can tell someone to F off and cut them out and block them. It's fine. You, you have the right to do that. They are not entitled to your energy. You know, so some of you do need to do that. There's certain people that you can keep giving to and there's certain people that you need to cut out because they're still draining you. They're still using you as an energy source and you're not even conscious of it. But anyway, so the love reading, and like I said, if you know, as I've always said, if this is your reading and you want a private reading, just send me an email. My email is below in the description box. It is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. Any donations are appreciated and please subscribe if it resonates. But anyway, I wanted to get in the love reading. I'm sorry. I know this kind of dragged on, but I feel like this, there might be two parts because sometimes I, my phone cuts out and I want to give you guys everything. So, you know, please, I'm sorry if it cuts out randomly, but just check back on my page for part two because I might have to do this in two parts because I think my phone's going to cut out any minute now. My ears are ringing a lot to you right now. It's interesting. But, um... But yeah, there's also new love here. And I think some of you are going to be so used to controlling things and like you're going to get in your head a little bit. You're going to have some anxieties, but there's going to be a new start. But I feel like, so there's two different messages here. And it, it could be that both apply to you or it could be that either one of these apply to you, you know, take it as it resonates. But I feel like there's, I feel like there's like a love, like there, I feel like the, the a second message here is regarding love where this is to, um, two masculine uh, rivals here that both want a new start with you. I feel like the King of Swords is going to fight for you. They're going to, there is going to be Nine of Wands. They're going to, they don't have much energy left in them, but the Nine of Wands, to me, I always see that as like the final battle. It's like, they don't have a lot of energy left, but they're, they're going to give this what, what energy they have left. Yeah. So you might be making a choice sooner than you might think. Ten of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. What else? You're going to have abundance. I feel like you're going to have a lot of like money and abundance and good things coming in this year too. Five of Swords. Hmm. Ace of Cups. Yeah, because you're starting a new path with somebody else. 
you're starting there's like a love offer here there's new love here there's a new beginning with love someone seeing themselves as a frog and seeing you as like a queen or king here and um, this is wishes fulfilled as well you have a lot of good energy coming in but someone's going to be defensive someone's going to be jealous someone's going to be heartbroken and someone's going to fight for you um one of these person one of these people is your ten of cups and one of them is not but there's going to be more conflict than than you might expect is what i'm feeling here because you see all this mixed energy look at this it's like ace of cups three of swords like do you see this how chaotic this is like it's it's like it's some really chaotic mixed energy and this is like this is dishonesty this is escapism but i also whenever i see this this uh card i always look at i always channel the visual here where it's almost like she's like he or she is like come at me bro you know what i mean like let's do this like almost like a fight so there could be some drama here um you could you could have you could be in a third party situation and you might be dealing with um a dramatic karmic coming at you like from the person that you're going to end up that you're about to end up with their person might come at you i feel like if you're in a relationship and it could be a third party situation on both sides or it could be on their side or on your side but i feel like um someone's here someone here is going to have this like come at me bro energy like male or female someone's going to fight someone is going to really fight someone is going to be really defensive um Someone is going to be in King or Queen of Swords energy. Because you have true love. You have a new... Ten of Cups is everything. You got nine and ten of Cups. That's everything. But someone is going to be heartbroken over this. So this is either your person's in a karmic relationship and they're choosing you, their soulmate or their twin flame. And the karmic's going to be heartbroken and pissed and defensive and give this one last fight and try to come at you. For others, you're in the relationship and you're thinking that your person is like... Like it's like maybe like a smooth transition can happen or whatever. And you're going to choose this other person over them. And it's actually going to be more drama than you're expecting. Um, it could be both sides. It could be, I don't know. There's just someone here that's going to fight for this. Someone here is going to be like, like trying to, yeah, someone here is going to have hope. They're going to hold on to hope. They're going to keep fighting for you. Or this, like I said, this could be your true love that you're about to re that you're about to you're about to meet them or you're about to reunite, reconcile with them, however that plays out. There's love here. And I feel like with the star, it's like someone's planting seeds and trying to someone could be doing witchcraft, but I also see I mostly see this as someone planting seeds. Like they're not like completely delusional, but it's almost like they're not gonna accept that it's over. Like you're gonna end things with someone or your your true love is going to end things with the karmic, but the karmic, whether it's your karmic or your person's karmic, there's some karmic here that's not going to accept that it's over. They're going to keep planting the seeds. They're going to keep having hope. They're going to keep being faithful. They're going to keep praying for this to to work. They're gonna they're gonna be in this toxic double energy where they're not going to take no for an answer. They're going to um. It's like they're, they're like addicted. They're codependent. Someone's codependent on you or codependent on your person. So even though they know it's over, they're not going to want to let it go. Yeah. They're going to keep offering this love, but it's like that cycle is ended. The karmic cycle is ended, but someone's not going to want to deal with that. You might get a harsh message. There might be harsh communication coming. Their person or your person might be giving you that. If you're leaving your person, they might be harsher than you expect them to be. There might be some... Um, If you guys both have other partners, it could be that your other partners are going to talk to each other about this. Like, it could be like it could be that situation. Cuz so I feel like I feel like like behind the scenes conversations, it's kind of the energy I get too. Um, Ace of Swords is like communication and fast communication, but it's also like I always say it as kind of like cutthroat. Like it's very harsh, very direct communication, and it's coming in quick. 8 of, eight of wands. King of Cups. Ooh. Okay, interesting. Yeah, someone that was the King of Swords is going to start being the King of Cups. Or this could be the other way around where it was the Queen of Swords and they're going to start being the Queen of Cups. Where it's like this person was emotionally detached. They were cold, closed off from you. Or they were cold and closed off from their person. Take it as it resonates. But um, they're gonna, they don't want to lose you. So someone's going to get in this King of Cups 
energy or queen of cups or this like i said this could be your person and the karmic doesn't want to lose them so they've been really cold and guarded and distrusting with them or just like not um just like not i don't know like just not not emotional they're not it, there's just like an energy difference between you and them and i feel like they're going to get in this emotional vulnerable energy like they're going to try to be more like they're going to try to be like you whoever you know someone if you're if if someone's choosing you over a karmic the karmic's going to try to be like you or if you're the one leaving someone and you're choosing someone else your your ex is going to try to be like that person your ex is going to try to compete with that person uh king or queen of cups here because they go from the king of swords to the king of cups you know and there's no communication there's distance here see all this mixed energy and it's like you're intuitive so you're staying strong because you know that as much as it hurts that this ending was necessary so either your person's having a hard time ending it or you're having a hard time ending it with your person, but it's like, or with, with the karmic, you know, whoever, whoever's karmic it is, but it's like someone knows, someone wants this, someone wants the 10 of swords, someone wants this to be over, even if it's painful, someone wants a new cycle, they want the ace of cups with somebody else. So even though it hurts, they want to end the old cycle with the karmic, be it you or them, someone wants to end an old cycle with the karmic so they can move on to their high priestess, to their three of cups. This is a fun, adventurous, like silly relationship, like best friends, like goofy. You guys might be both kind of weird and creative and artistic. Um, maybe like maybe a cat person or like a bunny person or something. Like I see, you know, you just see this energy. Like this is you guys together. It's like you're, it's just different. There's just like a different energy. It's like fun and adventurous and free spirited. And this is all part of your path, part of getting you back on touch, in touch with your, um, free spirit inside, which is going to bring you financial abundance and going to bring you abundance in um, your, on your psychic and spiritual path too. Yeah. You're starting a new, a new, um, a new life here. And you've got the hermit and then we have the angel of the Lanute, which is all about starting a new cycle or it's all about, sorry, it's all about the light, the, well, starting a new cycle, but it's like about the, the light that comes after a period of darkness. Pain of swords. The magician. Yeah, someone's going to try to manifest this back, but eventually they're going to submit because they're going to realize that they need to go inward and heal and start their own life, you know, start their own chapter somewhere else and be their own empress for someone else. Yeah, someone, someone is going to leave the karmic, whether it's your ex that doesn't want to let go or whether it's your per, your true love's ex that doesn't want to let go or both. They're going to let go eventually, but it's going to be, there's going to be a cycle where they're going to fight for the connection more than you might think. Some of you might think that the, that your ex is like over you or like, oh, they haven't talked to me in a while. I don't think they'd be jealous or um, like maybe if your person's leaving a karmic, they're like, well, the karmic cheated on me and the karmic wasn't happy with me anyway. So like, I don't think, I think it's going to be okay. But then like, it's like the forbidden fruit must be tasted. You know what I mean? Like someone here is is you don't expect them to, like, I'm not saying you don't expect them at all to freak out, but, like, they're going to freak out and fight for you more than you would expect or fight for your person more than more than you might expect them to. They will eventually give up. Like, it will cause them pain, but they will eventually let it go, um, and they'll close out this cycle, too, and get into their own, get on their own spiritual path, but it's just going to be, like, it's going to be a process, though. It might be, like, more of a process than you think. I feel like there's going to be more drama than you might anticipate. There's going to be, like, gossip rumors talking behind the scenes like i'm getting like people like conspiring you know um but it'll clear up it'll clear up you will have peaceful times ahead um you're gonna have to make a choice someone's gonna have to make a choice here two of swords and two of pentacles you're not gonna be able to juggle someone's been trying to juggle and it's like you're if you want peace you're gonna have to have strength to make a choice you're gonna have a new start with money two page and ace of pentacles yeah, but not not before you have a tower moment. <laughs> but the tower is going to be positive. It's going to be something that changes you and makes you more free spirited, more open, and, and makes you have like more. Um, it's like like Knight of Swords to me is like integrity, honesty. It's um, vows, promises. It's like fearlessness. We have you know the strength card too. So it's like this tower moment is actually going to be really positive, and it's kind of like that energy like. If you want peace, prepare, prepare, prepare for war kind of energy to me. It's like you're going to have the four of wands come in, but, you know, you're going to have the tower come first. But you guys are going to get through it. I feel like it'll be okay. Um, as always, if you want a private reading, just email me. Thank you for watching.